for this man, Iranian filmmaker Abbas Kir Rastami. The real world in cinema is a fantasy. Kir Rastami made this film, Where is the Friend's House, about eight-year-old Ahmed, who has mistakenly taken his friend Muhammad's notebook. He needs to return it, or else his friend will be expelled from school. Determinedly, the conscientious boy sets out to find Muhammad's home in the neighboring village. As Ahmed leaves Coca for the neighboring village, it is as though he is leaving a mythical land. His heroic journey takes him down the rhythmic landscapes of northern Iran. The film employs deep focus, long sequences, and is shot on location with non-actors, but it also feels like a fairy tale at times. In all regards, this is a poetic, realistic film. But for Kira Rastami, there is a layer of fantasy to his cinema that can be found in the landscape. Much like the Russian countryside in Tarkovsky's cinema or Bergman's Island, there is something about the portrayal and representation of landscapes that seem otherworldly. Even though these are real locations, we get the sense we are entering a fantasy. A dream? Cinema? Why is that? What is it about Coca that seems so mythical? Kira Stami's next film, When Life Goes On, explores this question. The film is about a director and his son in search of the actors who played Ahmed and Muhammad. The film feels more like a documentary at times, as the characters are interviewing survivors of the Manjil Rudbar earthquake, which damaged the region of northern Iran, killing upwards of 50,000 citizens. The film takes place outside of the world of Where is the Friend's House? In And Life Goes On, the film is acknowledging that Where is the Friend's House is a neo-realist film based around reality. But again, there are neo-realist conventions at work in this film. But this is not a documentary about where is the friend's house. This is something else. Is this Kira Stami's attempt to get closer to cinema? In the film, the director and his son are trying to find the two boys from the earlier film. However, nobody can seem to give them clear directions on how to find them. As they navigate through the desolate landscape of northern Iran to get to Coca, they are constantly faced with challenges that prevent them from getting there. The boys always seem elusive and just out of reach. They drive deeper and farther into the countryside and to greater heights, leaving the world below them and entering another. Is Kira Rastami saying cinema is a place we can't quite reach? Much like Coca. In the end, there is still a layer of ambiguity as the car gets up over the hill, but we do not see him get to Coca or to the boys. For us, the audience, they are still unattainable. The title suggests that life goes on after the camera has stopped and the credits have rolled. Thus, does Kira Stami believe we cannot fully mechanically reproduce reality? Cinema is restrained by the frame, the mobility of the camera, the process of capturing reality. Is he saying to get to the reality within cinema, we have to further acknowledge the process of filmmaking to truly get to some form of reality? That takes us to the final film in the trilogy through the olive trees. The plot revolves around the production of the second film, and life goes on. Again, there are long sequences, deep focus, actors playing supposedly non-actors. The story follows Hussein and Tahare, the newlyweds from And Life Goes On, who are not so happily in love. Tahare wants nothing to do with Hussein, and she is grieving for the loss of her parents, who were killed in the earthquake. We see behind the scenes of And Life Goes On, the crew, the filmmaker. But this is not Kira Astami, so this cannot be a documentary. 
What is this then? We finally see the boys from where is the friend's house. They look different, older, in a frame, real. This feels like we have finally reached the magical land of Coca. Are we now living in the world of cinema? Is cinema an acknowledgement of camera, filmmaker, actors? Or can it be made up by real people, real locations, real history? Is cinema the process of trying to capture or manifest a reality through mechanical tools? Speaking to us about cinema through cinema. He is a linguist of cinema. He excavates the layers of cinema like an archaeologist, examining its landscapes and regions. If coca is a real place in Iran, what happens to the mechanical representation of it? Is it still coca? Or does it become a mythical land we dream about, tell stories about? Kiarostami once said, I have often noticed that we are not able to look at what we have in front of us unless it's inside of a frame.